few years ago, I spent some time at a beautiful summer camp. We got to do this activity that was meant to teach us about trust. We all held on to each other at the beginning of this rocky path along the water. All of us put on blindfolds except one person who led the way. We moved slowly as we winded back and forth and up and down along the path. It was a little scary at times, but the more we trusted the person leading us, the easier it was. At the end of the path, we were all pretty impressed at how far we'd come simply by trusting the leader. Life can often feel like you're walking blindly. The good news is that God has a plan for our lives and He leads us every step of the way. Being a Christian involves following Jesus. Every day we make millions of decisions and those decisions shape what happens in our lives. We get to grab onto Jesus and trust Him because He can see what we can't and He's guiding us to full life. I was just like, I'm going to go exploring in the forest. Yeah, forest. I was lost for like 12 hours. Where's my mom? Where's my dad? And then where's my brothers and sisters? I just don't know what to do. I get oh. lost all the time. Uh, yes, I have been lost. Yeah, I went traveling with my granddad and we got lost in Thailand. I was on like a bicycle and I ended up on the wrong side of the highway on the way to work and I was horribly lost at 7 a.m. in the morning and my pants ripped and I got to work a disheveled mess. Well, Tasha's not the best at giving directions. <laughs> and so when we drive, I do get lost. We drove aimlessly for like maybe 20, 25 minutes. We are going to a, a campsite and we had lost reception on the way. I'm typically good with directions, but sometimes I like getting lost, so... Right now we're kind of lost. Now you gotta say that, so... Letter to the Romans, chapter 12, verse 2, it says this, Don't copy the behavior of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you. One Bible translator, J.B. Phillips, puts it this way, Don't let the world around you squeeze you into its mold. I had this really good friend named Josh, and he and I used to drive to and from university together. One day on our way to school, he started asking me questions about faith. I mean, he knew I was a Christian and wanted to know if that meant that I wasn't allowed to have any fun. He asked me questions like, are you allowed to drink? Or are you allowed to make out with girls? Are you allowed to do this or that? And I tried to explain to him that it wasn't really about me being allowed or not allowed to do one thing or another as if I was afraid God was gonna strike me with lightning, but that God really loved me and God has a plan for my life and he wants what's best for me. You know, following Jesus is not God's cosmic plan to steal your fun. He wants to give you life and life to the fullest. Yeah, God has a good plan for your life, and He doesn't want to keep it a secret from you. In this session, we want to talk about ways He guides us into a better way of living. My sister Tara was particularly gifted at the area of gossiping. Did you hear what she said to me last She's night? what you might call a swear factory. Awful. She was the kind of girl that would get on the phone at a thousand words a minute and talk to like a thousand people about some scandalous secret she heard that day. When Tara started following Jesus, though, things began to change. She told me how the Holy Spirit led her to a part of the Bible in James 3 that talks about how our tongue is a flame of fire and how with the same mouth we praise God and then we curse those who are made in His image. This is one of the primary ways that God speaks to us, through the Bible. Tara did a 180 degree turn in the way she talked. Now, it's rare to ever hear her speak badly about others. She's become one of those people you want to have as a friend because you can trust her with anything, including secrets. I remember one day after school in grade nine, I was hanging out with a group of guys that I didn't typically hang out with. One of those guys' name was Drew, and it didn't take me long to notice that the other guys didn't like him very much. We ended up hanging out at a park near our school playing a random game called Grounders. The game's simple. One person keeps their eyes closed while everyone else hides. It was Drew's turn to be it. When he closed his eyes, they all signaled to each other to run away. It wasn't like they're gonna hide around the corner. They literally are gonna leave him alone at the park. They looked at me and motioned for me to follow. I had to decide what I was gonna do. I didn't know Drew very well. We weren't really friends but I knew this was not okay. It would have been easier to be a chameleon and just blend in, run away and laugh about it with them later, but I decided to stay. When Drew finally opened his eyes a few minutes later, they were gone. It was just me. We walked home together, ended up having some pizza at his house, and today, Drew's one of my best friends. God spoke to me that day. He spoke to me through my conscience. 
It wasn't like the heavens opened and angels delivered a special message just for me. I simply knew in my heart what was right. Now sometimes God speaks to us in miraculous ways. My friend Daniel had an amazing encounter a few years ago when he sensed God's Holy Spirit speaking to his heart. One night he was giving a guy named Thomas a ride home. He didn't know him very well but wanted to give him a hand anyways. When they arrived at his house, Thomas invited him inside to see his workshop. In that moment, Daniel heard God say, go inside with him. He had never heard God say something to him so clearly, so he went in. Thomas showed him around the house and Daniel heard God speak to him again. Tell him I'm chasing after him. Wrestling back and forth whether he should say something or not, he finally told him. And Thomas began to cry as he told Daniel that he was depressed and how that very night he's planning to kill himself. He even showed him the gun he was going to use. Thomas explained to Daniel that earlier that day he was telling God that he didn't want to live, but if God wanted him to live, to send a message. That night, God led Daniel in a very special way to send a message to Thomas. Um, but core morals, the way you live your life, I think they will remain forever. Some people take it as like, this is wrong, this is right. And I think the world's too, there's too much gray for that to be. I, I feel that they are a bit outdated in today's society. No, I think some are relevant, some seem to be old fashioned. It comes down to the way you interpret it, I think. I think some of the views are old and irrelevant now, but some of them still sound like, be kind and take care of others. But some of them, like have sex after the marriage doesn't really apply anymore. I think that a lot of them are still, you know, important to be followed, you know, like don't steal, don't kill, like those kind of things. So it's kind of gotten to the point where it's like maybe we should uh, start rewriting, revising revise this day and age. And I think some people should uh, kind of adapt it to the modern day. Following Jesus really leads us into a whole new way of living. The way we talk, the way we treat others, and the way we see money and possessions. I used to live with a bunch of guys. It was awesome. One of my roommates was a high school teacher named Chris. He became a Christian in his 20s, and he told me a bit about his story. I used to live my life for myself. It was all about how much stuff I could get, how much fun I could have, and how good I could feel. I used my credit card to go on vacations, buy clothes, and eat and drink whatever I felt like. It was actually a few years after I became a Christian that my perspective started to change. I was really impacted by the words of Jesus, it's better to give than to receive. After following Jesus for two years, I signed up to sponsor a young boy in Africa. For less than $50 a month, I was able to transform the life of a boy halfway around the world. I learned that it was way better to live for eternity and to store treasures in heaven rather than on earth. My perspective flipped from how much could I get for myself to how much can I give away. I realized that when I used my life to help others, my life felt richer. I know that I'm making a difference around the world and doing things that matter in eternity. When I die, I want there to be hundreds and thousands around the world that were impacted by the money God gave me. The way of Jesus is totally unlike the way of this world. And Chris is such a great demonstration of what it looks like to follow Jesus in the way we see possessions and money. One of the other big areas that Jesus wants to guide us in is our sexuality. Have you ever thought about the idea that God invented sex? The Bible's clear about it. Sex is designed for a man and a woman in the commitment of marriage. My friend Josh was shocked when he found out that I was waiting until I was married before I had sex. He couldn't understand why I'd do something so extreme. But here's the thing. God invented sex, and it has the power to bring people together, build families, and give life. And because it's powerful, it can also cause a lot of damage when it's misused. I have a lot of regrets about the decisions I made in this area before I was married. When I started following Jesus, this is one of the biggest areas I sensed his forgiveness and love. He forgave me for the choices I made and he gave me a vision for a future relationship with my wife. Maybe you feel like you've messed up in this area too. We want you to know that God loves you and forgives you and has great things planned for you. Your yesterday doesn't determine your tomorrow. One of the poets in the Bible puts it beautifully when he says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. 
for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. What you've done does not define who you are. When a person becomes a Christian, they're a new person. Their identity, the very core of who they are, is hidden in Jesus. And when God sees you, he doesn't see the wrong you've done. He sees a child that he loves very much. While I was dating Rachel, I had tons of questions. One time in the middle of July, I was going canoeing with my older brother, Paul. Now, don't get me wrong, like, I'm not the kind of guy that canoes on a regular basis. It was just kind of a one-time thing. But canoeing's good. It's fun. It was awesome. It's just yeah. not something I do a lot. It was kind of like, it would be fun to go canoeing. Okay, yeah. And when you're canoeing, you've got lots of time to chat. So I asked him all kinds of questions, mostly about me and Rach. You know, questions like, is she the one for me? Or should I marry her? Or how do I know if I'm in love? You know, big questions like that. Paul helped me wrestle with this stuff and gave me some amazing advice. Having friends like Paul is so important because God uses them to give us advice and help guide us through life. God's way of living is radically different than the patterns of this world. God actively guides us as we follow him. I don't know if you've noticed the different ways that we've mentioned in these stories about how God leads and guides us. It's through our conscience, through the advice of others, through the Bible and by the voice of his Holy Spirit. God's got a great plan for your life and he wants to guide you along the way. If he does, that's cool, you know? If he's got, he's, got, uh, he's got something in mind for the way he wants my life to turn out, that's nice. I don't know if there is a plan. Yeah. I think you just fly by the seat of your pants. If there is a God and there is a plan, then what can I do about it? For whatever reason I'm here, I think it's for a reason whatever reason. Yeah, I think God has a plan for everyone. Make do with what you have and yeah. And you can make stuff happen for yourself, I think. Yeah. I think every step of your life, every year of your life, even every second, every minute, there is something waiting for you. But there's always choice. You make the changes that you want in your life. You want to go be something different, go be something different. Not because you're supposed to, but because you want to and because you have the drive to do so. If he does, he does. If he doesn't, he doesn't. Nothing I can do about it. I hope one day to be a really great dad. Now, I'm not going to let my kids do whatever they want. I'm going to have some rules and boundaries for them, but I want to protect them. And I want to help them do the things that they love and enjoy. I want to teach them what they'll need to be successful in every area of life. I want them to know how to have great relationships. I want them to enjoy life. God is a better father than I could ever be. He wants the best for us, and we can trust his direction and instructions for life. Imagine driving down the street without any rules for the road. No lights, no signals, no right of way, no speed limit, no crosswalks. Imagine there were no rules at all. What would happen? Or imagine a soccer game, or as some people call it, football, with no rules. Every player is free to decide what's okay and how to score goals. Someone might pick up the ball with their hands, spin around, hit someone in the face, run outside the lines and say, that's worth five points. That's not soccer at all. Soccer without the rules isn't fun or free. It's chaos. And God gives us boundaries so that we can enjoy life to the fullest. And this is the great paradox. God's instructions don't restrict us. They make us free. And when I first became a Christian, I dreamed of becoming a rich and famous NBA player. For God, of course. But I can tell you honestly that I'm glad I didn't. I'm thrilled with what God has done in my life. I didn't have to decide what to do with my life. Instead, step by step, I've discovered what God has for me. I started trusting God when I was 17. And now, years later, I'm more confident than ever that God knows what's best for me and that He wants what's best for me. And not just for me. God has a plan for you too. For the people you'll meet, the things you'll do, and the places you'll go. One of my favorite passages in Psalm 23 says this, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 